My name is Tim Burris. I am 18 years old and I am a senior here at Birmingham High School. My name is Stacy. I'm 17 and I'm in 12th grade. My name is Moises Castro. I'm 16 years old and I'm a junior. Hi, my name is Chelsea Vitillo. Um, I'm 16 and I'm in 11th grade. I'm Danny Zagire. Um, I'm in 12th grade. I go to El Camino Real High School. My name is Emily Lair. I'm 17 years old. I'm in the 11th grade at Birmingham High School. My name is Lisbeth Saldivar. I am in the 11th grade. Performing and visual arts programs in high schools are a vital part of a student's education. Not only do these programs provide the skills of an art, they also provide social skills and help students communicate their thoughts, feelings, and emotions in a productive manner. Many students have been affected in a profound way through their participation in these programs. Arts programs are important and should be supported and encouraged by our school districts and communities. But are they? I'm Amanda Swan, and I teach theater arts at Birmingham High School, where I'm the department chair of the performing arts, and I'm also a smaller learning community coordinator of the Performing Arts and Media Academy. This fall, it's going to actually grow to between 350 and 500 students, where all the students will have uh, similar classes together, their English and their history and their science. We're adding science and math this fall, and we're going to be located in the same area, so J Building and 200s. The students will have their lockers together. They'll have a common counselor, um, and it'll be the performing and visual arts, so the performing and visual arts are combining. This past winter, we wanted to give the students an opportunity to go to New York who hadn't been or had been just to see some new shows on Broadway and to experience all the sightseeing things. Um, I wish that more students had been able to go. While in New York, the students participated in a workshop with a professional musical director and a choreographer. After attending a Broadway performance of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, the students had the opportunity to speak with actor John Lithgow, who explained some of the benefits of his career. Good Lord. Most people have one, two, or three careers in the course of their 40 or 50 years of working. I feel like I've had a new career every time I've had a new job. Uh, and this ever-widening circle of fantastic friends and colleagues, every time you do a job, you end up with, you know, 10 new friends. And, uh, it's, it's really, it's an interesting life. I'm Terry Fisher. I teach choral music and music history. We've been, uh, as I said, swinging away for quite a long time here at this school. And, and it, it's tough each year because two-thirds each year from Camerata graduate. So we're constantly training and teaching and motivating and auditioning. And to keep that, that bar up there and to keep the standard maintained, uh, to have opportunities like this are, are wonderful yet important and necessary because we don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, we don't know about two, th 2007 or 2008, 2012. Uh, those kids aren't in high school yet. Mid-America Productions provides the opportunity for high school, college, church, and community choirs to participate in various musical events. In April 2006, the students from El Camino Real High School in Woodland Hills, California, had the opportunity to sing the world premiere of the Misa Americana at Carnegie Hall in New York City. The 
arts education branch, which is what I work for, um, we fund also middle schools and high schools um, by giving, this year it's $7, hopefully next year it'll be $8 per pupil. Let's do the math for a high school drama department. $7 per student per year times 210 enrolled students comes to $1,470 for the department for the entire year. Yearly budget, international thespian expenses, $1,200. Seven high school theater festivals, $3,000. Fall play, $4,000. Spring musical, $8,500. Total expenses, $16,700. Money they get, $1,470. Money they need, $16,700. Leaving the program $15,230 in the red. Two summers ago, um, we participated in the American High School Theater Festival, where we were one of the chosen um, top performing schools, high schools in this country to represent this country at the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland. And that was two summers ago. It was a really tough year of fundraising. It was really hard. I was really surprised by our community at, I should say I was really disappointed. With the community, I thought people would be so much more supportive, especially the big corporations here in the San Fernando Valley. Um, and they weren't. It was much more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I'd say 80% of my job last year fundraising for Scotland uh, was fundraising. I was no longer a teacher, 100%. 50, you know, 80% of my time is going to raising money, which, you know, takes me out of the classroom, takes me away from my objectives here, which is to teach the kids. We're all getting less. And so every club and organization has to go out and raise, raise more of their own. So does football basketball track. So there's not a lot to go around. So we just have to face that reality. I hear teachers from other schools saying, I don't have any money. I, I don't know what to do. Well, you know, we're in the same boat. Maybe we have $800 more to start the year with, but that's, that's not a whole lot. So you got to go out there and find it. One of the main things is it keeps kids in school. S kids, students love the arts, and if they will come to school for the arts, if they have a great program and they are involved in a great theater class or a great visual arts class or loves to play that instrument, they will come to school, and that raises attend that's attendance right there. They have to maintain a 2.0. They can't get any more than one U in cooperation. Uh, you get a work habits grade and a cooperation grade, and if it's an unsatisfactory in more than two, then uh, they're ineligible to participate in anything after school. Becoming involved in theater has possibly been the best choice I made since I came to Birmingham. Um, I came here when I was halfway through the 10th grade. Um, I, just, I, I just started out in Mrs. Swan's Drama B class, but it's such an incredible experience. If I didn't join theater, I would still just be one of the 3,700 kids out on the quad, you know, just wandering around. I'd probably still be spending my lunch times alone reading a novel. But theater has really provided me with a family and something to work towards, and it, it's such a source of joy. It helped me stay out of trouble because I don't live in a very good neighborhood. So theater makes me stay in school till like really late. So I don't have time to go do bad things or anything like that. I go home, do homework, and then go to sleep. <laughs> People in the program and the program itself have actually helped me grow as an individual because my parents got divorced about two years ago and it really affected me 
as an individual because I was very close to myself. I didn't like talking about my problems to other people. I, I've always smiled, I've always laughed, but I've always had a problem keeping my problems to myself. And making friends in the program, both choir and drama class have helped me feel comfortable with them and let them know my problems and let them help me. I've watched my students go through a lot and become stronger and am and, and, and completely shocked sometimes when you find out something that you never knew about them, about their personal life or um, the experience they've had to go through, the difficulties. Uh, the truth is I can't even imagine what I would have done had my life been what some of theirs is. My life so easy, you know, compared to theirs. So if you know, sometimes all they need is like is someone to listen. I was born with a neurological disorder called Tourette's Syndrome, which uh, causes um, uncontrollable spasms. Uh, I used to have things where I used to like twitch and like nervous twitches and all kind of stuff like that. And it was really hard for me, especially with people. And uh, through performing, it's just, I can get up on stage and like, I can let go and I just, it completely changed me. I mean like, some people don't even know that I have it. Some people look at me and I just, you know, I can feel normal and it's just helped me so much and like helped me take everything that, that's negative about it and just throw it away and concentrate only on performing and singing. And You know, when you're looking at how the brain processes music and, and how it's different in processing speech and other things, it's, it's no wonder that when you find people with certain types of neurological problems, misfirings of synapses, that when they're involved in music, the brain behaves differently. Chemicals change. And so you may have someone with like Tourette's who for them in playing an instrument, things change chemically for them in their brain and they get involved in something and therefore the other type of disorder doesn't come out. <laughs> we often call this in music therapy, structuring for the incompatible response. Um, in other words, if you're involved in music, you can't be involved in something that is not helping you. And so this happens all the time. So what happens when a school has the money it requires and makes a concerted effort to emphasize the arts in their curriculum? Let's look at Viewpoint School in Calabasas, California. Well, in the arts, we have, uh, first of all, the school since its founding in 1961 has maintained that the arts, all forms of the arts, fine arts, performing arts, are all instrumental and important part of a, of a child's life and hopefully of an adult's life too. Uh, so while we have a strong reputation for excellent academics at Viewpoint, which has only grown over the years, uh, simultaneously our students were having lots of opportunities to perform, to draw, paint. Uh, in recent years, of course, it's grown. It's been philosophically part of our school's tradition. Those students perform an, uh, an annual play. Each one performs an annual play every year. Every child performs. Uh, there's primary and lower school choral groups, primary and lower school dance companies that perform here and also the Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza. Uh, so those programs begin at a very early age, which I think exposes children to the arts at a very early time and makes the study of the arts to be just as natural as studying math and English and social studies. It's just part of what you do when you come to school, as it should be. I'm very fortunate to go here this year. They, they gave me a scholarship, actually, um, and because we were I, we had some problems at home being able to afford it, and they, they took very good care of me, and they, you know, they allowed me to continue going here, and I'm just grateful every day that I get to wake up and, and, and come here and, you know, 7 a.m. singing and, you know, being in plays, and it just, I'm very grateful to go here. <laughs> Thank you.
99.8% will never go into acting. But the skills that they provide here for them is creativity, expression, communication, speaking skills. I mean, that's part of our ESLERS, which is our standards at school here, you know, is being an effective communicator. It's a powerful, powerful tool. And I think that that's, um, it, we're creating better people, more expressive people, leaders. Why would you want to take that away?